Hey there, them. So, more essays from you. Great. Let's see what you did today. The first one is your rainfall uh, task one. This one's pretty tricky. Let's see how you dealt with it. Okay, the line graph compares the rainfall rate measured in millimeter in three British countries, namely England, Scotland, and Wales, throughout 2018. Overall, the amount of rain widely fluctuated from month to month in each of the given countries. Perfect. It can be clearly, no, it can be seen clearly that both England and Scotland started in January uh, at over 100 ml, as opposed to Wales, which had a rainfall just under 50. Yep, true. Throughout the year, the rain level in England kept swinging. Mm, don't use the word swinging. There's a very specific task one word here that we use, which is fluctuate. So the rain level in England kept fluctuating around 100 ml per month, with the lowest rate in June at about 75 ml, and the highest, you didn't even need this word here, in July, September, and December at roughly 125 ml each. Okay, I like that. That's pretty good. Scotland, compared to England, experienced wider fluctuations, particularly during the winter months. After starting at nearly 120 in January, it plummeted to a low point of roughly 20 ml in February. Then it soared to a high point of 130 in March before it declined again to less than 50 in April. Notably, during summer, the fluctuations were of a smaller amplitude. Nice. Very good. With regard to Wales, despite... Mm, despite... It beginning, or despite, uh, yeah, that's fine. Despite it beginning as low as 50 in January, the rainfall showed a tangible upward trend until it peaked in July at about 135 ml, exceeding that of England and Scotland. Soon after, it dropped to about 40 ml in August and remained static throughout the autumn months before it rose again in November to just over 100 ml. In contrast, you need an S here, to the upward trend in rainfall in England and Scotland in December, that of Wales trended down. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I really like this. I didn't even have to look at it. I knew that what you were saying was accurate. You explained it really well. You, um, it was clear. The trends were shown. It's a very nice job. Really good work. Let's look now at your task two. All right, so let's now look at your task two. Um, age criteria, positive, negative. Okay. There are different regulations worldwide ensuring that people have equal opportunities uh, to get employment. In some nations, it is considered not illegitimate, but illegal for and work um, all right you know what you're trying to do here you're clearly trying to change around some of the vocabulary um but it doesn't really work okay um in some nations you're basically trying to say rephrase this and i can understand that but these particular words don't work so in some nations um there is legislation regarding um, uh, I don't know, um, the legality of hiring based on age criteria, something like that would have been okay. Okay. I think that it is an advantageous process and I totally support that this practice should be widely, um, accepted and implemented. This essay will briefly reinforce my stance using pertinent examples. Okay. Fine. Although I feel like you're making a little too much effort to try to um, change around the vocabulary or try to showcase your vocabulary. Remember, you know, showcasing the vocabulary you have is great and we should do it, but um, we also want it to sound natural. So sometimes um, you need to sometimes simplify it. So I wouldn't have said it will briefly reinforce, I would have just said this essay will reinforce my stance using pertinent examples that would have been fine all right first the people young or old alike should have equal chance mm, should have an equal chance to get suitable jobs provided that they have the required qualifications uh, plural indeed acceptance of a candidate in a certain job should be based solely 
on his or her competency for the post. Age, gender, color, and religion should not be considered. This translates the virtues of equality and impartiality into a real practice. Take Finland, which enjoys the highest level of people satisfaction. For example, they're Finnish senior citizens and are not done their jobs because of their old age, as long as they are able to fulfill their post requirements. Okay, a couple of things I would have changed here. Mm. You know what you could have done instead? Instead of take Finland, you could have said, in Finland, for example, which enjoys the highest level of, and this isn't really quite right, people satisfaction. We don't really say this. Um, we don't say people's satisfaction, we just say like quality of life, really. Um, so in Finland, for example, which enjoys the highest level of quality of life, the fin not the, but Finnish senior citizens are not denied, denied jobs because of old age, as long as they're able to fulfill their job, their post requirements, fine. Therefore, it is prudent to allow an even chance for people to work regardless of, regardless of their age. Yeah, not S, regardless their age, regardless of their age. Um, I think both are correct, although for some reason automatically my, my mouth says regardless of, but okay. Secondly, despite the age of 60 being ING, so despite the age of 60 being or, you know what else you could have done here? You could have said, secondly, despite the age of 60 widely accepted as a cutoff age for requirement. There's no clear inverse relationship between age and productivity or competency. What a nice expression. I really like that. That is to say, being old should not be taken as a surrogate marker of being less competent. For instance, it was unequivocally shown in different studies conducted in Syria that workers' productivity is not related to their age. And senior workers can be as productive as younger ones as long as they are functionally fit. Hence, it is evident from compelling from a compelling body of evidence that old age, per se, does not, you always have to write out the full word here, not contraction, preclude work competency. Lovely. The conclusion to be drawn from, from the aforementioned arguments is that setting an age as a criterion for job acceptance is inappropriate, should be banned because it contradicts the value of indiscrimination, and moreover, age alone does not predict workers' competencies. All right, lovely. Um, there are a lot of really nice areas of language here, a lot of areas where I was like, wow, look at how nicely you expressed that. So good job. Um, yeah, of course, there were some errors in some places where I kind of stumbled a little bit, but um, it's okay. I mean, there were a lot of areas that I actually did really like. So go ahead and correct these. Send them back to us. Don't forget to add to your error correction list, and I'll be waiting to see your next set of essays. All right, good luck with that.